Okay, a quick summary of measurements one student made. Uh, we have sample points on a smaller surface that looks something like this. Okay, and a little more slope in this direction. Uh, and irregularity here, but there's a dip. Uh, and it's still something much like that. And uh, decided that F was 7.08 centimeters here, 7.1 centimeters here. So it's almost flat between here and here. Uh, here and here, uh, our G function, which is actually the same as the L function, we're gonna call it the G function, uh, is 6.7 centimeters here, 7.5 centimeters here. This leads to an estimate. Okay, well, the dimensions here are Four point nine centimeters by two centimeters. Four point nine centimeters here, two centimeters here. Based on the sample point, we determine that the line integral around, along C one, which runs from here to here, I haven't labeled it, that the line integral uh, on C one is going to be seven point oh eight centimeters times the four point nine centimeters. The value of the function as approximated at the sample point by the displacement in the X direction. Okay, well, we could multiply that out and we did, but uh, it's not on the board here. Uh, up here, you're gonna have the 7.1 centimeters times the negative 4.7 centimeters. Now the 4.7 centimeters is the same, so this plus this, you're going to have a negative from the 7.1 centimeters, a positive from the 7.08 centimeters, because this is in the positive direction. Your delta x is 4.7 centimeters here. Your delta x is negative 4.7 centimeters here. The difference is 0.02 centimeters. So if you add your integral over C3 here, to your integral over C1 here, you're going to get the 0.02 centimeters times the 4.7 centimeters. And that gives you approximately negative 0.1 centimeters squared. Well, that's the integral of your F dx, your approximation to the integral of F dx. Your approximation to the integral of G dy is based on the values of G here and here, 6.7 centimeters here. and 7.5 centimeters here. Same approximations. Uh, the distance is two centimeters. The displacement here is plus two centimeters. Displacement here is negative two centimeters. So you're gonna have two centimeters times this minus two centimeters times this, which is just two centimeters times this minus this, which is two centimeters times 0.8 centimeters which is 1.6 centimeters squared. There's your integral of G dy. There's our approximation. Okay, that's good. Now, all that is summarized here. I mean, all, all the details of that are here and there's where our 1.6 centimeters squared comes from. So if you want to go through these calculations, which I wrote out quite well, that works. Now I did insert this step here. Um, and I'm not gonna, not gonna belabor that because I've talked about what I did there, factoring the seven point five centimeters for this integral into 6.7 centimeters and 0.8 centimeters, which gave us the 1.6 centimeters squared when multiplied by the two centimeter displacements. Okay.
Green's theorem says it's the integral of f dx plus g dy. And I always tend to be pretty strict about parentheses, even though we know what this means. Uh, it should be equal to the double integral over the area of negative fy plus gx. Well, okay, what's fy? Based on these two points, the change in f is 0.02 centimeters. The change in y is two centimeters. If you multiply 0.02 centimeters by two centimeters, you get I'm sorry, if you divide 0.02 centimeters by 2 centimeters, you get 0.01. So Fy is 0.01, negative Fy is negative 0.01. Why is it negative Fy? It's because the top integral is going in the opposite direction to the bottom integral. And the top integral is done after this integral. So think about it. Uh, The gx, well, g changes from here to here by negative 0.8 centimeters, from 7.5 centimeters to 6.7 centimeters. Um, and from here to here, your delta x is your negative 4.7 centimeters. You divide the 0.08 centimeters by 4.7 centimeters. And I did that here, and you get about 0.17. That's where the 0.17 comes from here. That's your GX. Okay. You add those up, you get 0.16. That's your negative FY plus GX, unitless, times your delta Y times delta X. Now, delta y is two centimeters, delta x is 4.7 centimeters. Then you multiply this out, you get 9.4 centimeters. Nine times 0.16 is 1.44. And um, you still have that 0.4 centimeters, which gets you up to about 1.5 centimeters squared. Okay, well. Is this double integral equal to this integral? Well, this integral is what we did here. And according to our approximation, this adds up to point one five centimeters squared. The two are identical. And my advice then is to think through why these two are identical and understand in detail. And it's much easier to understand in terms of symbols rather than the numbers. But once you understand the symbols, you can see how the numbers go together to ensure that this is going to be pretty close to the case. Now, it's pure coincidence and mental arithmetic and everything. I'm not even sure about that 0.17. So I'm not sure this really comes out exactly the same as this even the two significant figures uh, because of the waviness of the uh, surface in both directions. Uh, I don't expect that these two would be exactly the same based on one, two, three, four measurements and measurements of width, of length and width, okay? Those are the only measurements we took. Uh, if the surface was a plane surface, some normal vector and so forth, and get the equation with the plane. But it's pretty easy to prove that these two will come out exact. Any subregion that I'm going to use this block because you can see it. If I split this block up into small parts, okay, like here. So if I could extract all these thin rectangular parallel pipettes. Uh, they would be truncated parallel pipettes uh, or truncated square cylinders or prisms, okay? Uh, whatever we call them. Every one of these regions would be bounded above by something very close to a plane region because the second derivatives aren't that big. They don't have time 
to change very much on any of these small regions. And we'd get an excellent result if we were able to do this, which we are. If you cut this thing up, you have to lose the saw width and all that stuff and be impossible. Uh, one more thing. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but you can also visualize this. Uh, it's just a bunch of pins. If I put my fingers here, you can see the shapes of my fingers. Okay. And then if you want to see the shape of my thumb, I don't know if this thing's going to, yeah, there's my thumb. Okay. I take the surface and put it in here. We see that we have a good approximation of the surface. And if we take, if we partition this surface into small approximate, well, small parallelograms. Uh, between adjacent sets of four pins, again, we get a very good approximation. The integral, of course, occurs when we allow the dimensions of our regions to simultaneously approach zero. Okay, well, again, you can read proofs of Green's theorem and use those ideas to understand integration, understand Green's theorem in some depth. So please do so.